change is not from this material world. It is descended down from the spiritual plane. We all may have so many external coverings coming from different places, coming from different upbringings, coming from different experiences. But when we're all together chanting this transcendental sound vibration, which has got nothing to do with our external occupation, our external identities, our external gender, age, qualities, it is completely beyond all of these conceptions that we have. And when we chant this holy name together, you can experience, you can experience the spiritual platform. You can experience your eternal, real position. We are not meant to be stuck in our occupations in this world. We're not meant to be so much attached to our external positions in this world. We belong to Krishna. Krishna is the most attractive. He's the supreme enjoyer. He's your supreme friend. And he's the supreme controller. If you know these three things, you have complete peace. Because if the supreme controller happens to be my best friend, and he happens to be the supreme enjoyer, that's a pretty good equation. That means a supreme friend means he will share his enjoyment with you. When you have a real friend, someone who's genuinely your friend, they will share their enjoyment. Friends are not selfish. Friends are selfless. They give time, they give energy to you. So Krishna is our friend. And he comes to us in so many ways through the association of devotees. But primarily, he comes to us through his names. Simply by chanting his names, you can experience Krishna as he is. Because between Krishna's names and his eternal self, there's no difference. So, thank you all for coming here. Thank you all for making this Kirtan happen. You know, Kirtan is not a one-man show. Kirtan is a combined effort. When we all come together and we call out Krishna's names, then the combined effort grabs Krishna's attention. And when you grab Krishna's attention, immediately you experience a certain type of bliss, which cannot be explained. I can sit here and try and describe to you what a mango tastes like. But I'll never get anywhere. I can tell you it's sweet. I can tell you it's yellow. I can tell you it's fibrous. But what does it taste like? What does a mango really taste like? The only way you can know is you get a mango and you put it in your mouth. <laughs> and then you know what a mango tastes like. And try explaining that to someone else. It's impossible. So this temple, this space, Srila Prabhupada, our founder Acharya, this used to be his room. You know, this is actually a very special place. It's better than the theater. <laughs> because he used to live here. So it's got some, some good vibrations in the wall. You know? So he built this space specifically for us to come and taste the mango. So, you know, thank you for, for tasting the mango. We had a little mango feast. <laughs> and I think we're going to have a, a, another feast. You know, yes. Very, very I, soon. That you need to. I need to figure out where I'm supposed to be doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> I stay eating the mango instead of, <laughs> instead of doing my external occupation <laughs> as an organizer. Thank you, Raul, very much for coming. First time with us, hopefully not the last one. Please, every time you come here, you should, you should come and uh, perform this blissful transcendental activity. Thank you very much.